Peace and greetings, everyone. Divine Zeal here. I wanted to do a quick little uh, preview, sneak peek of the Cypher Box version 1.0. Um, we're already working on the next revisions. Um, ideally, this is going to be about this big, um, the next revision. We're going to rearrange some things. Um, we're upgrading this RFID um, to the NFC slash RFID reader, and um, that is going to be really exciting. I already showed um, a short uh, showing the ESP32 with the new uh, reader, um, and then we're going to make uh, this much smaller. We're going to replace this with the ESP32 C3 Super Mini. Um, yeah, so the next version um, is going to be sick. It's going to be pretty much I'm um, about this size um, but for now we have the first version and these ones um, I'm either a going to give uh, a lot of these out for free um, uh, I have about 20 of the PCBs um, from PCB way and it'll be a good way to um, have some people test it out um, some will be for uh, sale but the uh, upcoming next versions um, we're also going to add um, a C1101 um, module, which will add um, low or sub frequency scanning. So, so it will be able to um, read frequencies from, let's say, um, your key fob, which is 433 megahertz. And then, um, you know, if you have like automatic Wi Fi blinds or something, that might be like 833 uh, hertz or whatnot. And um, I'm also going to be adding in the infrared um, read and writer, too, as well. So it's going to be a lot of cool things, but uh, let's take a quick look. I want to just show you the menu and all the different features currently that this will have. So let's turn it on. There it is. Okay, so here is the main menu of the Cypher Box version 1.0. <clears throat> so this is, as a reminder, um, supposed to be a replacement for the Flipper Zero. It's like a two, three hundred dollar all in one digital uh, gadget for nerds is how they market it. Three hundred dollars. You think some kid in Ghana is going to pay three hundred dollars for some... No. You think some kid in India is going to pay that? No. You think some kid in Nebraska, United States of America, in the rural ghettos on a farm is going to pay $300 for a Flipper Zero? No. So, this is what we came up with. And uh, please let me know in the comments if you have any other suggestions, any other features you want. You create this. Help me. So first, we have the packet monitor. So what that does is it creates a PCAP file. And with this, you can use Wireshark, or any other type of um, PCAP analysis uh, software. And what a PCAP file is, is it, it takes the packet data, any um, activity that happens on a network, it creates packets. Packets are sent and received. And um, with those packets, especially when an uh, individual connects uh, to a network, <clears throat> are sent in the airwaves. So what this does is, is it monitors and uh, just gathers all the data um, from that. And then it saves it to your micro SD card. So next we have a Wi-Fi sniffer. And uh, this is uh, similar to the packet monitor, um, but this um, also listens in on um, just uh, networks and collects that as, as well. I, I'll go more into that, um, but that's just the basic overview. Um, here we have the uh, AP scan, and what it, that is, AP is access point. Um, so it scans for Wi-Fi networks. Wi-Fi networks are, are also called access points. And um, you could check that out. Not all the features right now are um, loaded in the main scripts, but I'll show you some things. So here, as you can see, um, 
because I'm out in the field, um, you know, shows different SSIDs, um, it shows uh, the RSSI of how strong the signal is, what channel that Wi-Fi network's on. And uh, this is just a good low-key way to first do some initial analysis uh, on where you're at. And uh, once again, um, this data can be logged to the SD card and you can do further analysis later, um, but it gets all the initial uh, Wi-Fi data that you need. Um, next, we have uh, AP join, and this joins um, a Wi-Fi network. And you can also um, enter in the Wi-Fi network's details, like the password and whatnot, uh, through your phone. Uh, you can connect to this device via terminal. And you can also um, connect to this vi device via its web UI, which I'll get to Next, that. there is AP Create, and uh, this creates a Wi-Fi network from the ESP32. And then it starts a web server as well. So then you can uh, stop the AP, <clears throat> and uh, this uh, closes the uh, Wi-Fi network that the ESP32 has created. And then you have stop server, which um, closes the uh, web server and, you know, the web UI that the cipher box makes. Next, we have BT scan, which is Bluetooth scan, and it uh, does an initial scan of all Bluetooth devices uh, nearby. And um, that could be nice for some uh, initial analysis. We have BT create, so this creates and acts as a Bluetooth device um, that your phone, your laptop, whatever can connect to. And then you can control this uh, via phone. And what's nice about that is that you can power this by your phone and then also communicate to the device. So um, because there isn't a keyboard, uh, at first you might feel uh, limited but then you can um, connect uh, to your phone and then you can enter in, um, for instance, uh, Wi-Fi network information to connect to. You can uh, type in commands with uh, the Bluetooth server command. And then there will be um, some pre-made commands that you can use. And then we have uh, Bluetooth HID, and HID is human interface device. So this acts as a keyboard and a mouse. Um, so it's similar to like the rubber ducky, bad USB. Um, but basically, if someone connects to uh, this device unknowingly, you can have it set up so it runs a whole host of commands. You know, you can open up their contacts, open up their email, you know, you could forward emails to your email. You could do literally anything. Um, anything that you as a human can do on your phone or your laptop, this can mimic and do as well. Next, we have iPhone spam, which I'll go into uh, deeper. Um, this is a very interesting uh, vulnerability, but it, it more or less renders uh, your iPhone um, useless. And um, it's probably like my favorite feature, <laughs> to be honest, because it's just like, it's you can literally be uh, like at a stadium or something or thousands of people and none of them can use their phone. Um, but I'll get into that later. Next we have uh, Beacon Swarm. And this basically creates, you know, like a few dozen um, fake Wi-Fi networks that pop up on anyone who's around. Um, so it could really um, cause a little bit of chaos. Wouldn't really say havoc. Um, but I am working on this. This this feature is not yet ready. Um, next, we have Devil Twin. And what the Devil Twin is, is... Um, it, you first, you know, you can use the Wi-Fi scan to look at all the networks, and then you can use Devil Twin to clone a network. And uh, what it does is it it 
it's like a honey pot of sorts so when someone connects they'll be pushed to a fake page that um, fools them into putting in their password so now you get the password for the original network and it's like um, just a social engineering uh, proof of concept next we have the uh, RFID reader and this will allow you to read RFID cards like the MyFair Classic and then also write uh, two cards and also emulate uh, cards as well. Um, but once again, I'm going to be upgrading this so you guys will have the NFC and RFID uh, capabilities and um, that is really exciting too. Uh, one thing I'm also working on is the radio frequency uh, scanning and emulation. Um, so basically with the CC1101 uh, module, I'll go probably right here, um, we'll be able to um, read uh, sub-frequency things like your car, you know, any anything that transmits a frequency under uh, 1000 hertz. And uh, that's really interesting too. Yeah, and that's really interesting too um, because I know that's a big feature on the Flipper Zero. Uh, next, we have the party light uh, because this NeoPixel uh, lights up, and that's a cool feature that, uh, yeah, I don't think Flipper Zero has that. Huh. No party light? All right. Uh, next, we'll have the uh, File Explorer, and this will allow you to. Um, do stuff with your SD card or see what's on there, delete what's on there. Um, next we have the SB bot. And what this is, is I'm working on a uh, ESP32 Tamagotchi uh, implementation. There's a few projects out there, um, but I'm, I'm trying to get my version going and it's, al it's almost there, um, but I'm really excited to uh, share that as well. Cause I wanted to add um, some more entertaining aspects to this. So it's just not um, a straight uh, cybersecurity tool. Um, next, one thing I'm also really working on is the deauthorization um, of Wi-Fi networks. Um, it does work on the ESP8266, um, the ESP32's sister, um, but I'm working on converting that code um, so it properly works because it's still a very uh, complex thing and it's not a really it's not really the worst because there are other tools that specialize in deauthing. Um, you know, so I'm just trying to make sure it's perfect. Um, next, we have uh, the games. Um, and there's going to be hopefully some like just some mini games like Snake or Tetris or something, uh, if possible. And then uh, you'll be able to uh, mess with some settings of the uh, cipher box. And then we have a help section. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much all the uh, options. I hope you guys like it. And uh, let me know what you think. Yeah, so that is the um, basic overview for um, the main core features uh, currently that are going to be implemented. Uh, I'm just working on finalizing the code. It's a lot of code. It's um, every feature I showed you is, you know, um, <clears throat> a pretty hefty script. Uh, so it's about like, you know, 20, 30 scripts. I'm kind of just molding all together, um, you know, which is going to be cool because each feature um, is its own independent project that I'm going to upload to GitHub too as well and i'm just one person so the idea is that um the community will really help uh make this um what it needs to be after i put out the template of sorts um but the pcb files are going to be open sourced and uh, once again thank you to um pcb way for doing a really amazing job um and you know it's only going to get um much better um, I highly recommend them. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I really want to know what uh, you guys think 
on uh, the project so far, if there's any features um, that you might want added. Um, the only thing that I can't really grasp with the Flipper Zero is the I button. Um, and I really want to um, really make sure the UI is really good. So I'm working on some cool um, graphics and um, really making sure the menu is all well. And what's really uh, cool is I'm going to put out the um, scripts for just the menu in general. So more people can make um, similar uh, devices and tools and stuff. <clears throat> But yeah, once again, uh, just let me know what you think. Uh, this, this once again is just the first version. Um, that's kind of how prototyping goes uh, until you get it right. Um, but so far, I think I'm, I'm doing pretty good. It's really trying to test how much one $2 microcontroller um, can do. <clears throat> you know, it's a proof of concept with cybersecurity. You know, some, you know, kid in India with, with eight dollars, maybe ten bucks, um, could somehow put something like this together, you know, and possibly do some uh, security damage. Um, but once again, thanks for tuning in, and I will be creating uh, much more as we make our way uh, to the final product. And uh, thank you for coming along this journey. Now, anyways, as always, stay peaceful, stay positive, stay progressive, stay productive, and stay proactive. And I promise you, I promise you. You'll always be blessed and you've always been blessed. Divine Zeal signing out with the Cypher Box.